Well, that's a good start. That's the very first ball I have hit. Titanium face, just how hot are these things from Callaway? That was a four iron, fairly low ball fight. Seemed to zip off there. What we're gonna do is find out in today's video what difference a titanium face actually makes and is it gonna send ball speeds off the chart? That came off really nice because one of the things it's gone a bit left. Oh, and a tad long, which is one of the things I'm gonna be really interested in. Titanium face is a lot to do with ball speeds, also to do with consistency off that club face. But I've also got concerns because in the long end of the bag, maybe I want that ball speed, but that was a pitching wedge. And what I wanna know is, are there any trade-offs uh, in terms of ball speeds, control and spin by having a titanium face? Just hold your line. I just died to the bunker. I uh, know, and that was good because that was a 153, slightly elevated, played an eight iron, so kind of regular distance there. The bit that surprised me so far is just to how good these feel. I was perhaps expecting something a little bit different, but really like the way they feel off the face. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to test them out on the course, which is the bit I really like doing, I think is the most prevalent, but I'm also going to get you some data from inside, get some trackman numbers and see how these new irons from Callaway perform. New part of the Apex family, is it worthwhile you spending possibly £2,000 on a set of these new irons? That's an interesting one, off the bottom grooves, it's straight but it's, uh, it's fired off. And in a way that's what I always say that I like to see some performance when uh, I've not got the centre of the club face because that's what this thing is all about. The fusion element is a titanium face and a forged body. Two pieces that essentially what Callaway is saying are producing performance like a muscle back iron. Um, and it is really, I suppose, aimed at the golfer who's perhaps uh, losing a bit of club head speed, requires a bit of help in that ball speed area. Um, but it's also suggesting it's got that forged feel as well. So this Apex family is certainly grown and there are a number of different iron varieties. And what I wanna try and do in today's video is establish where the Apex TI Fusion exactly fits in and perhaps is it aimed at, well, what type of golfer? That's an interesting ball compared to the, uh, the one we've just hit off the tee. That was again a four iron, totally different launch angle and has definitely zipped off that club face, but that was definitely more center of the club face. The thing is, we've always associated titanium with a driver face. So it's really interesting that they've seen the logic in putting titanium into an iron face. So the question is, why hasn't that been done more often? And is that all down to this cost element and why Callaway are charging such a fee to buy a set of these. Now we can't ignore the looks of these things because they are quite different. So first and foremost, the finish. Uh, it's a DLC coating, um, which as I understand is a more premium finish than the other option, which I think might be PLD or something along those lines. But uh, obviously you want it to be relatively hard wear and that black finish is potentially uh, changes over time. Um, and I don't know what I think, to be honest with you, because I really love what the Apex lineup looks like this time around, and that's these new AI 200, AI 300s in that chrome finish. And I'm normally a big fan of any of the sort of blackout versions, and I like this. I think the one criticism I've got, I don't like that plastic Apex insert in that rear side. It's, min it's, it's minor, but it's a big deal for me, and I'm spending a lot of money, and uh, whilst I want uh, a few boxes ticked at two grand, I want every box ticked, and I just think that that is a, a less premium finish than quite what I would expect. But as ever, it's a very minor issue and uh, I'd be more interested in your thoughts. So what do you think? TI Fusion Apex Irons, any good? A real night, I mean, I've, I've leaked it out to the right. That's all about my swing. But again, oh, it's just disappeared. That's sort of the right distance you'd be looking for. And the bit that surprised me more than anything is, like I said, that feel. That was a pitching wedge, got nice ball flight. What should hopefully look like a fairly controlled and sort of slow swing, 120 yards to the flag. 
like I said, it's probably a yard or two just short of that distance. Um, but I feel like for the effort I'm putting in, it's definitely getting results out of that club face, um, which is impressive. But we'll probably learn a bit more about that when we see the Trackman data. It's probably one of the most impressive things about this club is the ball flight with uh, such a strong lofted iron. That being the four iron, I've really enjoyed hitting it. I really enjoy the sound and feel, which has been quite surprising. Interesting enough, there's one thing I would definitely point out to anyone considering any of the Apex new lineup, to be honest with you. This four iron is lofted at 21 degrees and the five iron is lofted at 23.5, which is a serious concern because I've never seen gapping in an irons of just two and a half degrees. And when you consider the six iron, I think it's 26, these will all be on screen for you now. Then the gap that I've always been used to is sort of four, maybe five degrees between each iron to give you the suitable uh, yardage difference. So I pay careful attention that if you're buying any of the new Apex lineup, really have a look at that long end of the bag and ask yourself the question, do you need a four and a five iron, which have got two, two and a half degrees difference between the two. Needs to come in a bit, super fast again. Uh, well, it's just about made there, and I think at the flag it would have been the right distance, but it was a 170, 175, six iron. Nothing out the ordinary there, whereas sometimes I've seen the ball absolutely fly off and sort of understand the logic of the titanium face. There's been other elements where I've not. What I am seeing is at times certain attributes that are quite impressive. But what I want to do now is end the on-course stuff and just see if Trackman data can give me a better story about what is special about this face insert or not. Right, so we're going to start in the position we just left the fairways because I can't believe it with a six iron which carried on average, would you believe, 175 yards. So it's really nice to see some that reflected from outside into Trackman data. So those numbers with six iron, 175 average carry launching, uh, again, which is something I said, fairly steeply at uh, almost 18 degrees. Um, a 116 ball speed off 80 club head speed, a peak height of 85 feet. That spin number again, I'm gonna dismiss it off the mat, but it's low, but you've just seen out on the course, the ball stopping fine, land angle of 42.3 with a six iron. That's a really good set of data, apart from you could criticize the spin number, but you could do that in every video that I film, hitting a ball off a mat. Then I wanna go uh, to the eight iron. Again, slightly longer than I would normally hit an eight iron, so 149 carry. Launching again steeply, peak height, spin number down as being low, and a descent angle of 47.5. Really good set of numbers. Um, but this is the interesting bit, and again, something that I highlighted within the video as being a major issue. This is a four iron, and let's go 187 carry, and then go back down to that six iron with a 175 carry. We've got 11 yards of difference between a six iron and a four iron, and somewhere in there, you're supposed to be squeezing in a five iron. So that is a complete no-go, and really didn't need data to tell me that. The lofts of they, those things were really concerning and did worry me. Going back to the four iron, 187, 14.6 launch, two eight spin. All the numbers again are relatively impressive. The one thing I would say is that the main difference, because you could argue there's not a great deal of difference between the six and the four. The main difference being is ball flight and um, how that is again gonna react on fairways in the main. So if you're looking to use long iron off the tee, it's gonna launch a lot lower, more penetrating ball flight and roll out. So plenty of justification for having a four along with a six in the bag, but certainly not to have a six iron and a five iron. That's me done. Can't give you any more information other than trying them for yourselves. The price tag, I always try and stick out of that uh, part of the equation, how people spend the money, totally up to you. It's an expensive set of clubs and imperative that you get custom fit if you're gonna look at these things and maybe consider some of the things that we've highlighted in today's video. Right, I hope you enjoyed it. I've got to make a request. We're getting near 100,000 subscribers, so please, if you can, hit that uh, subscribe button and let's see if we can reach that milestone fairly quickly. Right, thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.